Hey, what's up everybody? Hammer Heart Metal Reviews here once again. Today we're doing another brand new album review for you and we are going to be talking about one of my most anticipated releases of this year. And that is the debut full length from Moonlight Sorcery titled Horned Land of the Thorned Castle. So this album actually doesn't release until this coming Friday, September 29th. But over on the Black Metal Promotion YouTube channel, there was an early stream released. So I have been diving into this very hard over the last week. I've already pre-ordered the CD, which should hopefully be here by the end of the month, give or take. But yeah, if you're unfamiliar with this band, this is their debut full length, but they did kind of burst onto the scene in early 2022 with their debut EP, Piercing Through the Frozen Eternity. That EP really set them on the map and just really announced their presence with this very unique blend of melodic symphonic black metal with hints of power metal in there as well with these like neoclassical style solos and the guitar playing really stands out especially for a band that's maybe labeled as black metal you usually don't get these like neoclassical style of solos and guitar playing. This band is from Finland. They did also release a second EP in 2022 as well, Nightwind, The Conqueror from the Stars. That was also very well done. I don't think it quite reached the level of Piercing Through the Frozen Eternity, but nonetheless, it left me craving a full length so that I could get a little bit more than just 20 minutes at a time. And it has finally arrived. This album is nine tracks. It's about 44 minutes long. So as usual with my reviews, I'm going to kind of give you a track by track run through, give my thoughts on the album as a whole, and then I'll score it out of 10 at the end. So like I said, this is still labeled as black metal. It's got the black metal rasping with the vocals, which is really what makes this classified as black metal, I suppose. But you almost have to throw genre tags out the window when it comes to this. I'm sure a lot of people listening to this would not really consider this black metal, but that doesn't matter to me. Good music is good music, regardless of what the label is. So yes, this gets labeled as black metal, but there is a ton of power metal stylings in here as well with these riffs and solos. And maybe that sounds like a weird combination, but they really make it work here. The guitars absolutely shine. Amazing songwriting and just really technical, awesome guitar playing. It features that like typical Finnish melodicism that would you maybe be familiar with bands like Kalma or Winter Sun. Kind of some elements there, whereas like early Kalma really has that like neoclassical style and melodicism with their melodic death metal with some keyboards in there. Think of that, but then in terms of black metal instead of death metal, and maybe that's kind of what you could imagine here if you haven't heard the band before. Um, lyrical concepts are very fantastical. Look at the album art, amazing. It's just perfect for the style with the concept and all that. Compared to the couple of EPs, I will say the production on this album definitely went in a cleaner direction. You can hear everything a little bit more. It's a little crisper, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depending how you look at it. It's definitely not as raw as that first EP, and I really dug the raw approach on that first EP. I do like that you can hear everything a little bit clearer here, but the one thing I will say that's maybe a slight knock on this style of production, at least for this album, is the drums, the snare has kind of a thinner sound to it compared to like the oomph that was on the demo. I could use maybe a little more like heavier low end here just to kind of give it a little more muscle, a little more oomph. But th these are very minor nitpicks. Overall, as I go through this, I don't have much to complain about. I'm just trying to be honest as well. Give a thorough analysis here. But yeah, this is just a band that's really developing their own style. Let's get into this now. Go track by track. Okay, so the album kicks off with the opener to withhold the day. As soon as this starts, you press play and you are just in for an epic and powerful opening song. It's bla got blast beats, it's got shredding guitar, and it really just showcases what you're in store for over the course of this album. It's got that great black metal rasping, which really just gives it that harsher edge over top of these triumphant melodic riffs that just take it to another level. Features the keys in the background as well that just add to the epic nature and the epic soundscapes. And there's an excellent solo in this song as well, which might be something I'm saying quite often in almost every song. The guitar absolutely shreds. Like I said, it's not something you get all the time with black metal, but it really suits it here. They don't go over the top with it. It makes it stand out and it makes their sound unique. Really awesome way to open up the album. 
After that, the second track in Coldest Embrace. This was one of the pre-released singles that actually included a music video that you can go check out. You can go see them in their corpse paint. Got some of the coolest corpse paint designs I've seen in a while. This one's just crushing riffs and drums. Um, more of that neoclassical style in the riffs mixed in in spots. And this one's just super headbangable and full of energy. Another great track that features great guitar work. And like I said, the guitar is really the shining star throughout this album. It might just knock your socks off. Really technical playing, awesome stuff. After that, the third song, The Secret of Streaming Blood. After a little quiet intro, he screams the title and then it just kicks into high gear. Puts a smile on my face. It's got this great melodicism on display and the interplay between the keys and the guitar is really well done. A very catchy, melodic chorus. It's just, once again, so triumphant sounding. Makes you want to pump your fist in the air, wield a sword, go cut some demons up. Like, it's just that style of fantastical metal that I absolutely love. I love black metal. I love power metal. Mixing them together doesn't always work, but it works for this band. Another killer song. After that, the fourth song, Yon Silma. This one is possibly my favorite track on the album. Starts with this really subdued, like beautiful intro on the guitar. Just really great playing. And then all of a sudden explodes into furious riffing with these epic keys. And it's just another, ex wow, can't talk. Another great example of their unique style in a nutshell. It's got that neoclassical power metal stylings, but then with black metal vocals and more aggressiveness than a typical power metal song. And it just works so well awesome track definitely one of the highlights after that the fifth track Vihan Varan Taken might be mispronouncing that this is another one that was pre-released before the album dropped and this one's just a pure in-your-face ripper it's fast paced and frantic riffing and drumming this is a short to the point song but another great one overall as you see as I'm going through all these songs like you can kind of get a taste that there's like a really eclectic mix of songwriting styles here. It's not just the same thing every time. They've got fast rippers, they've got some different styles of songs and it just really works well, really creates their own unique brand of fantastical melodic black metal that just sounds like Moonlight Sorcery. So anyways, getting off track, but back to the sixth song, The Moonlit Dance of the Twisted Jester's Blood-Soaked Rituals. Try to say that ten times fast. A handful of a title, but this one is the instrumental on the album. Absolute shred fest. The guitars destroy on this song. Awesome instrumental. Kind of follows in the previous EP, um, Nightwind, The Conqueror from the Stars. There was an amazing instrumental. Of, what was that called? Constellations, I think. Don't quote me on that. I haven't listened to that one in a bit. But I remember the instrumental on that album knocked my socks off. And this one does the same. Just an absolute showcase for the guitar here. Seventh song, Fire Burns the Horizon. This one has got great black, mo black metal tremolo style riffing with this melodic lead work over top. This one's more of a straight ahead like black metal style song, but it still features those elements to create something a little more epic and glorious. Like it's still, while I say it's more of a straightforward black metal song, it's still got that glorious melodicism over top that still brings in that power metal element and it's just awesome stuff here. Eighth song, Into the Silvery Shadows of Night. This one switches it up again. It has a very slower pace to start off the song and it's got a great build up throughout with these epic melodic solo and lead work. So once again, they're not just doing the same thing song after song, completely switched it up. They know when to go fast paced, when to slow it down. I really applaud them for their songwriting in here and for the diversity from song to song. Then it goes into the epic closing track, another one that's possibly my favorite on the album, Sudden T or Wolven Hour Part 2. The song Wolven Hour was on their debut EP, Piercing Through the Frozen Eternity, so this one kind of ties back to that. This is the epic eight-minute closer, and it is just awesome. The, it's got, like... Ugh, the songwriting and guitar playing is so impressive here. I, I know I'm just repeating myself. Great solo, great guitar play, but that's what it is over and over. They have this in spades and it's just amazing. It's so reminiscent of like early Kalma, like I mentioned earlier, with what they do in the death metal spectrum. This is kind of like what Moonlight Sorcery is applying, but over the scope of black metal. And maybe that's not the best description for this, but at least that's what my ears kind of hear. And it works so well absolutely amazing way to end the album. 
So my thoughts on this as a whole, just chocked full of excellent, memorable songs with these melodic riffs that are going to stick in your head and solos that will make you just want to play air guitar and shred along to it. Um, like I said earlier, some people might hear this and be like, that's not black metal at all. What are you talking about? I don't care. There's enough black metal here for it still to get labeled as that. Genre labels can get too picky sometimes. It doesn't matter. This is just a killer album. You don't want to call it black metal, so be it. There's enough of it here that it, I think it's still within that general scope, but they're kind of creating their own sound here, and it's amazing, so I don't care what you label it. Call it whatever you want. It's just a kick-ass killer album. Honestly, this could be an album of the year contender for me. We'll see as I spend more time with it. I mean, I've only been listening to it for a week, so we'll see what happens down the road, but nothing really but positive things to say. My one minor nitpick was about the snare sound. Could be a little beefier, but overall, that is such a minor nitpick when these songs are this good and when this album is just so fun and enjoyable. Honestly, one of the best things I have heard this year. So to score it out of 10, You've watched my reviews before, hit 7.5 out of 10 or higher. It's something that's solid, creeps towards 9. That's like next level stuff. I'm actually going to give this a 9 out of 10. I think it's amazing. It could even climb. Sometimes my opinions change. Maybe it'll drop down the road. But for right now, this is really impressing me. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Solid album that I strongly recommend you go check out. So if you have heard this album, give me your thoughts on it down below. Let me know if you like it as much as I do, or if you don't, that's cool too. I always like to get some conversations going. If you haven't heard it, definitely go give it a spin. Don't think you're going to be disappointed. So anyways, until next time, Hammer Heart Mel Reviews, out.